Ash Ketchum. You either hate him, or you love him. There are many reasons to hate him, due to the fact he releases his Pokemon every other generation. Some of them even being the best ones he's ever owned. And when I mean release, I'm talking more so like, gave away, or they're kinda just sitting there in a place where they should technically just be with Ash. Every single league he has ever gone to, he has lost. The closest ones he almost won were Sinnoh and Kalos. I can excuse the Indigo League because it was his first one. Orange League doesn't count. Johto was tolerable. Hoenn sucked. Battle Frontier wasn't a league, it was more of a gym system. Sinnoh was great because he used previous Pokemon he caught, and Tobias is kind of a dirty cheater. Unova sucked. Kalos was great because he used Pokemon he captured in that region, and it just so happened to be that those Pokemon were his most powerful ones. The last battle in the Kalos League was epic, but of course, in the end, he still lost. We could say that Ketchum has lost due to plot needing to continue, but I don't want to hear that answer though, because it's a true and obvious answer. Instead, I want to take control of Ash Ketchum in the Pokemon anime. I will skidoo like Steve does from Blue's Clues to the Pokemon anime world and take control of his body. I will reevaluate everything he does, such as not releasing Pokemon or using Pokemon from previous generations to make better synergized teams for the leagues to make this butthead's reputation better than it is. I think the reason why Ash loses leagues is because of the lack of variety he has on his teams. He doesn't use his strongest Pokemon or Pokemon that would be the most useful on a team of six. In some generations he does, but why doesn't he do that all the time? This time I feel like he will do it again in Alola. So I'm going to build this man a team, or should I say the best team for him to use. The team will consist of Pokemon varying from his most powerful ones to ones who get useful moves. I will also be taking into consideration Pokemon he has the power to get back, such as Gudra or Greninja. He used Gudra for Kalos, he can use it again. Greninja is available as well. Pokemon like Butterfree, uh, rest in pepperonis. Overall, this team is going to consist of balance, defense, bulk, speed, and offense. This is Ash Ketchum's best team I feel would be best for him to use when taking on a league. The Pokemon trainers will bring to the leagues will be unpredictable, so it's a good idea to bring Pokemon with type advantages, league battling experience, power, and a team that can be used for almost any scenario. Can this team be switched around for other Pokemon in his arsenal? Of course. To me, this is just the team I feel would do the best overall with Pokemon he has. Other teams can be made to fit a specific matchup. On terms of unpredictability though, I feel this team works best because he has a balanced team that's hard to counter. Initially, he has a Pokemon for almost every weakness. This team could be used for Alola or any future league Ash decides to do, so let's just get into the building process. Starting off this team is Ash's starter Pokemon that he has brought with him everywhere up to date. Pikachu needs to be on this team because Ash and him have a bond that is practically unbreakable. If he had to make a team of six, he would bring Pikachu. For a Pikachu too, it's a powerhouse, even though its power is so unpredictable. One moment it could dominate or be dominated, but I think because of everything Ash and Pikachu have been through, it's considered as a must-have for this team due to the chemistry and bond they have. There is no other real explanation I can give on why Pikachu is on this team. Next up is probably the biggest fan favorite everyone was expecting to see on this team. And I mean, why would I not put Charizard on this team? I think everyone can grasp just how powerful it is. It's came to Ash's rescue so many times, and is Ash's most powerful Pokemon that he has in possession right now, if we don't count Ash Greninja. Charizard is on this team mainly for its sheer power and battling experience. What kind of best team for Ash Ketchum would this be without Charizard? I know it's predictable, but seriously, who wouldn't put Charizard on a best team? It's also got a reputation for taking on some pretty formidable opponents such as Blaziken, Articuno, Polyrath, winning Ash's match with Gary, smacking down Iris's Dragonite to the floor, and quite a few more actually. This Pokemon has a very impressive track record, and to be honest, it's Ash's trump card. Apparently Slash is also more powerful than Outreach. Finally, we get the step out of Kanto and head over to Kalos, where I mentioned earlier that's where some of Ash's most powerful Pokemon were. Of course, a lot of people were expecting this one, and you guessed right because Ash Greninja is going to be on his team. Ash and Greninja have the power to become one, practically fusing. It's Ash's version of Mega Evolving his Pokemon, and we all know the power increase Greninja gets after attaining this transformation. It's easily Ash's most powerful Pokemon, and there is no way that I could not put this Pokemon on the team. Plus, Fire, Water, and Electric isn't a bad way to start off this team either. I'm not going to get into what makes this Pokemon powerful. I am sure the majority of you have seen this power for yourselves already. The first half of the team is now complete, and you guys were probably expecting all three of these Pokemon. The second half of the team is where I still keep power in mind, but it's where you guys will start to see more of a balance. Right now, all we have is offensive power. Next up, there will be offensive power, but some defense as well, along with the use of utility moves. 
The second half leaves us still in Kalos and brings back an old friend he left behind being Gudra. This Pokemon isn't just cute, it's also Ash's only fully evolved Pokemon, as well as being his only pseudo-legendary Pokemon. It's fully evolved in Dragon type. Dragon is one of the most powerful types in Pokemon, and it has a lot of resistances as well. This powerful Dragon also comes with Dragon Pulse, Rain Dance, Bide, and Ice Beam. Dragon Pulse is a powerful stab attack. Ice Beam is good for coverage against some of Ash's weaknesses on the team. Bide works tanking hits and unleashing them onto opponents. This works well because of Gudra's defenses. And finally, there's Rain Dance. Rain Dance works in correlation with its ability Hydration, which can heal status effects on it. If Ash's opponent has a status move, he can switch to Gudra and heal it away. Not to mention Rain Dance also powers up water moves, making Ash Greninja's water shuriken a lot more deadly than it already is. Gudra provides defenses as well as maintaining decent offense, coverage, and utility for other teammates. We need more defenses, so this time I'm going to have Mr. Ketchum use Snorlax. This happy sleeping giant is a monster in battle, helping out Ash in quite a few situations, even winning him a sumo wrestling competition. Snorlax knows Hyper Beam, Ice Punch, and a lot of others. Snorlax apparently has more than 5 moves, so I guess it's a super Snorlax. I guess eating a lot gives you the ability to have more moves, I guess I just need to eat more, huh? Anyhow, Snorlax is very bulky and can take a lot of hits, as seen with Ash's battle against Gary. Snorlax, in my opinion, is Ash's strongest Snorlax type Pokemon. It's a lot more viable than Tauros. Snorlax has a lot of experience battling in leagues, gyms, as well as fighting in the battle frontier against fighting Pokemon. Snorlax has a reputation for taking on Pokemon that have the type advantage over it, so that's also great experience. Having a strong normal Pokemon is a great thing for Ash. For its size too, this tank can move pretty fast. Snorlax provides a versatile option for Ash, and as I said in my previous best team, such as Kanto and Ultra Sun and Moon, there is nothing wrong with having a strong normal type, and Snorlax is the perfect fit for anyone's team, including Ash's. Finally, we have the last member of our team, and if I can be honest, I could not decide between Crocodile or Heracross, but I think in the end, I am actually going to pick Heracross. Here's why. If I pick Crocodile, that's three fighting weaknesses, and as I stated earlier, I'm trying to keep balance. Crocodile is a decent choice, as it's fast, has experience of league battling, and also is a solid ground type, but I wanted this bug beast instead. I wanted Heracross because now Ash has his fighting type Pokemon, and Hera has access to powerful attacks, but at the same time, they are also utility base too. One move being Sleep Talk, which comes in handy when getting put to sleep. Ash brought his hair across to the battle against Tobias and it landed a solid hit on his Darkrai, after being hit with Dark Void. Heracross knows Focus Punch, Sleep Talk, Mega Horn, and Horn Attack. All of these moves are pretty powerful, aside from Horn Attack, but it's the anime, so... I guess it's powerful after all. Heracross can tank fire attacks as it took a direct fire attack from Gary's Magmar. It resists the fighting types and it acts as a cushion for Pokemon that have sleeping attacks. I feel that Heracross is a good final piece to make this team fully balanced. It's naturally powerful and has most of its experience from league battling, as that's where it's performed the best. Well. That was my opinion of what the best possible team of six Ash could have if he had to choose. I feel that this team provides a sense of balance. It has all the necessary elements for making a great balance team with utility, status, support, offensive capability, and bulk. I understand that Sceptile or Infernape could have been better options, but Charizard outclasses Infernape, and grass types, well they just don't do all that well. Greninja already takes care of ground and rocks, and Pikachu takes care of water types. But Mystic, what about Quagsire and Swampert? There are only two Pokemon, and I'm sure Ketchup will pull out a victory. That was my team, though. Would you guys ever place any team members? If so, which ones? Share yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, why not leave a like and subscribe with the bell turned on so you guys know when I upload. Comment hashtag notification squad in the comments below to join the notification squad. You can now be one of the cool kids in my comment section. Also, if you guys remember from the best team for Ultra Sun and Moon video, 4th Gen Gamer and I mentioned we were doing a giveaway for Ultra Sun and Moon. All you have to do is subscribe to me, subscribe to him, and follow us both on Twitch for a chance to win a free copy of the games. If you sub on Twitch, that automatically gives you 5 extra entries as well. The giveaway link will be in the description below. With all that being said though, I think it's time to head off. Like always, I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I will see you guys next time for some more awesome Pokemon content.